Hey folks, welcome back to the final video in our Prep, Set, and Go checklist. This is step number four, and we're going to focus on the shared library components. So let's just jump right into it. Let's go to our editor, and let's open up the library and the shared fo folder. I just want to talk about a few of the pages in here to start off with, um, because we've already updated the menu top. Now these pages at the very top of the list, these pages are already embedded into your web template pages. Custom Component 1, 2, and 3, Google Analytics, Miscellaneous Scripts 1 and 2. If we open those pages up, they're blank. So what we've done is we've pre-embedded some library pages into your template pages for you. So if you want to quickly add something to all the pages in your site, it could be an additional graphic, it could be a script, it could be an image, it could be additional text, whatever you want. If you want it applied to all of your pages, here's a quick and easy method of doing it pop whatever you want into the custom component page, save it, it's now applied to all your pages. Now there's something you should know. The custom component 1, 2, and 3, this is something that's added to the header region of your pages. You can reposition it through your style sheet. We talk about that in a different tutorial in the system though, but you can reposition your custom components through a style sheet and it's only positioned within the header of the page. The Google Analytics and the Miscellaneous Scripts, these three pages here are located lower on the page and the right location for adding any Google Analytic or miscellaneous script information to your page, it's not visible to your visitors. So if you want to have something in your page that's a tracking script, for example, you can put it in any of these pages. It'll be added, but it won't be visible for your customers or for your, your visitors. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is just typically the way I sort of start to do my library pages is I just open them all up and go through them. So starting at the contact page, here's a neat bit of information. If the contact page is pre-populated for you through your members pay when your template is packaged. The email address that you used for your account is the email address that's also used for the contact form. So you don't have to actually edit this if you don't plan on changing the email address. If you do want to change the email address, you can actually log into your members account. Let me just show you that right now. Right, when you log into your account, click on the instructions button and that'll take us to our next page here, a product management page, and purchases. Click on web template, then click on basic form handler, and there's some information here. Basically you can put a new email address into this box right here, click generate. The form is updated, and there's a video down below, lower on the page, showing you how to insert it into the page. Uh, but while we're here, basically what you would do is you would just take this form information right here, you would copy it, and then in your contact page, right here where it says form method post, there'll be some information very similar to what you see in the, on the other page. Just click on the, uh, just do a control V to paste it over top. I'm just going to use my tab key to line it up a little bit. And that's all you have to do to update the, the uh, form is replace the existing information with the uh, new information from your account created in this form code box here. But the video down below has a much more detailed explanation. I just want to briefly touch on that uh, for you right now. Okay, so that's the contact page. Tip, now what I do next, I just sort of start with every other page, open it up, and go from there and modify the text in the page. And it's very straightforward from this point on. There's no magic to updating the uh, shared information because once you see it uh, in your library page, it'll make a lot more sense. Uh, with that said, these pages can change. Your template package may be slightly different and it may include all of the library pages you see here. It may have new library pages. It may not have as many library pages. It really depends on the design and whether it was something that was included at the time or not. But either way, no matter what pages you have in here, the information will start to make a lot more sense. So let's open up the footer page, switch it into design view, and we'll see here the information that's unstyled. We did this for a reason. It's a lot easier to edit the information in a basic page like this than it is to try and do it in a pre-styled page. Right? So typically what we're going to do is we're going to preview our index page or any page that includes the particular library component. This is a great habit to get into. Preview your page. All right, we're going to scroll on down to the bottom into the footer section of the page. There it is right there. And, and we can see quick links, let's get social, get in touch. Now it's just a matter of jumping back and forth between the editor. Now when it comes to editing text in a page, now you might think it's just a matter of swiping things, and really it is. Here's a little trick that I'm going to show you. 
And this is something I've gotten into the habit of, and it saved me just hours of headaches trying to get things to line up just nicely. If I'm going to be editing an H3, like a title tag, I don't just swipe it over with my mouse and type in something, you know, type, you know, new sort of information here, because sometimes if I'm distracted or I fat finger something, I lose the H3 tag and it shows up as sort of nothing or none, right? In other words, it, it switches over to just regular old text. And I'm like, what the heck? What happened there? It doesn't look the same, right? And then, of course, if I were to save that and preview it in my browser, suddenly it's like, oh, what, what happened there? Now it doesn't look right, okay? And that's, of course, one of the reasons why we always keep our the page we're editing open in our editor, so we can just quickly do a an undo there, okay? But what I'll do is I will select the item that I want to change. I'll use the quick tag selector and then click that and then type in my new title. Um, our links. Actually we're going to do for zoo links. Okay, there we go. I'm going to save the page, the save the footer page, control S, and just give it a quick preview. And there we go for zoo links. Now the icon is gone. You see that? We have an icon here, an icon here. Okay, well, that is one of the setbacks to working in the design window and with icons, uh, with the font awesome icons. You do need to add them back in manually or you can cheat. If there is an icon, for example, let's get social. Okay, I'm going to show you a little cheat here. If you want to keep that little tweet but just change the text, do the select, right? So select your H3 tag, pick it in the quick tool selector bar up top here, then switch to code view. See this over here? Let's get social, the text in black. That's all you have to change. Um, social links. Just like that, switch back to design view. It says so social links. You don't see the icon. When we save it, however, and preview it in our browser, there it is. It kept the little icon and it changed the text. So that's a little trick there to sort of saving the icon. The other thing you can do, of course, is just grab an icon class when you're all done and pop it in front of your text like so. So just pop that back in there. And we're going to do a uh, smile. Okay. And of course, if you go to the Font Awesome website, there's over 311 different icons you can pick and choose. And we cover that in greater detail in a different tutorial. So I'm just going to give you a quick brief overview of a couple of tricks you can use to um, pop it in there. All right, let's switch back. You still don't see the icon, but if we go to our thing here, where we go, there we go. Now we got a little smiley beside the title. Now the rest is just straightforward. It's text, there's icons, and just regular bits of information that you can change within the page. To change any of the links, I suggest you right click on it, use the hyperlink properties, browse to your page and change the title right here. So for Zoo Home, for example, and we're gonna keep the index page. There we go, it's now changed to for Zoo Home. And I'll, I would go through and change the rest of these to match up with the uh, pages that I have in my nav bar and in my storyboard. I'm not going, going to include all of them, just the major pages. So if somebody's at the bottom and, and whatnot, they can find it. Um, social links. This is just a little bit of information in here that we sort of put more as a advertising bit of information. And your footer may or may not have this. It could be a completely different arrangement in the footer. The idea here is just going through, selecting the paragraph, and this is a new paragraph graph of text. We'll just uh, correct that. And then there's your icons right here. And to, to update the icons, it's just a matter of double clicking on them. There's the hyperlink right there. Type in your account. Okay. Whatever your Facebook page is, just put the link in here. That's all you have to do. If you don't want that particular icon, just click, go up to the, uh, see the image tag, then go to the A tag, like so, and then press delete on your keyboard. And just continue on with the rest of the icons right there. And you can also go and add new icons um, as well. Yeah. 
Now if you're going to add new icons, we do have a chapter in the tutorial section that talks about working with the social icons. How to copy and paste, how to preview them, that sort of thing. So go through the uh, main tutorial index and just look for the chapter on working with social icons. It'll give you a lot more detail. Okay, and then finally we have the get in touch. And then we're just going to adjust the information here. For the email address, when you right click and use the hyperlink properties, and you're not going to see this in the video, but I'm clicking the hyperlink properties, it should automatically select the email address box because we use the mail to in here. So just sort of scrub over that and change the email address to your own email address. You can also fill in a subject and then recently used if you want to, but uh, that's a little bit beyond what we're going to cover right here. And then, of course, the copyright, which we've already updated in the very first. Okay, so really, that's all there is for the footer. Right? The Google search, in here we have some code provided by Google. And I have a video in a separate section covering this because it takes a little bit more detail to go through the Google search. But in a nutshell, once you've created your Google account and you've created a cert, your own search bar, you just need to replace the code right here. That's the identification key. You replace that with your own identification key. And then it'll actually pull up the results from your website, your domain only. The graphic logo, that's the one you see in the page, and your template may or may not have a graphic logo. If it does, great. If not, you can add one. And then you can position it uh, directly through the um, styles.css. Now, as you noticed in the uh, tutorial page, there's actually separate links to each of the uh, different components, such as the graphic logo and the, and the phone and whatnot. Uh, so if you want to learn it in more detail, this is just a brief overview of what to do. You can go into the graphic logo page, drag your new logo on here and position it, or if you need to reposition it. Uh, if you need more detail, just click on the link. It'll take you right to the actual tutorial that goes through modifying those different, uh, these specific components, I should say. And finally, we have the phone. That's just a straight phone number there. Okay, uh, just update the phone number and it'll be updated across every uh, aspect of your site. Now for this one here, I'm going to suggest you actually switch to code view. And I'm going to suggest that you change the number right here in black. That way you don't remove the icon because the icon is kind of cool with the phone. And there's no use and because it's a phone number, you're not going to use a different icon. So just switch it right here, save it to update. All right. Then there's our social networking icons right here. Right. Like I said, the quick and easy thing, if you want to keep them all, is just to double click, enter your actual uh, web page address right here for your Google account or your Google page uh, in this example, and then click OK. And to remove it, of course, click on it, find the image tag, then the A tag beside it, and press delete. Now your tag tagline, that's your primary tagline, and we'll just go back to our page here. That's the primary tagline right there. And then we have the website name. So those two can almost go hand in hand. I suggest updating the website name and the primary tagline together. So that way when you save it, and we're going to do this right now, we're going to select that H3 tag, type in Frizoo Golf. Just like that, we're going to save it. Then we're going to do the tagline, and Golf for the guys. And we're going to save that as well because we can refresh and make sure that everything lines up together because they sort of go hand in hand. We've got the website name and then we have the, the tagline that goes below it. And of course you don't want it. If you don't want it, I should say you just select it and press delete on the page and it's toast. So that's an easy one right there. And finally, we just have the text links. And this is these are just the regular text links up here and it may be, you may have additional text links or additional components that use text for menu buttons and things like that. But the process is all going to be the same. You just right click on the existing word or the existing link, use the hyperlink properties, change the name for Zoo Home. And if you want to link to a different page, scroll through, find the page you want to link to, click OK, and then you're done. Okay. But like I said, with this one here, once again, we use the icon. Now, I want to show you something here. When you change it 
like I just showed you, in other words, if you just go directly in and right click and do the hyperlink, your editor will probably pop the icon class into the wrong place for you. It'll keep it there, but it'll move it outside of where you want it to go. So what I mean here is you need to find the I, the I class, select tag, and I'm just going to use the control X on my keyboard to cut it. Then I'm going to put my cursor in front of the F and for zoo and paste it and then hit the space to add it back in there. Yeah. So that's just one thing if you want to keep the icon just to uh, manually move it over later on. And that goes with any icons or any font awesome icons. You really do need to put them in manually. It's not something that works well in the design window and that's just a limitation of the web editor. Uh, but with the font awesome icons being so cool, um, we think that it's probably a good idea to use them because it adds an extra punch and uh, really makes your website stand out as well as the links it really makes them stand out um, and the only other thing really is the themed object and this is at this point in time just a blank page um, it depends on the theme actually you may have um, a package for example the Fortis template uh, or the Fortis HD template but different themes may or may not maybe a medical theme has a themed icon or a themed object and the business theme doesn't it really depends on the theme and if there's something we can put in there that really adds a little bit of punch to the page if we don't have anything that really adds some punch we just take it out so it doesn't look goofy uh, but this is just a typical drag and drop an image onto this page and it should show up and if I go to my uh, my assets I have a themed object right here okay and what I could do is, I'm just going to slide this out of view. I'm just going to reduce the size of this for a second. And so you can see sort of how I embed this. I'm just going to drag and drop this into my uh, themed images folder. Okay, I'm just going to drag the golf ball into my themed images folder. And then I'm going to drag it onto the page like so. And that's it. Now I've added a theme object. When I save the page, it's going to be updated and now we're going to have this little golf ball somewhere in the header of my page because like the custom components up top, it's also something that's only displayed in the header of the page. As a matter of fact, aside from the footer, pretty much everything you see in the shared library goes within the header of the page, except for things that I've already mentioned. So that's how you use the themed object. And of course, watch the tutorial on how to position it so you can position your themed object within the page. And really that's just covering the shared library items. When you go through, they start to make sense. As long as you preview your web page, you can sort of spot things like home, about, contact, the phone number, contact us. You know, it, it all starts to make sense as you, you know, look through the page, understanding that the footer is the footer and pretty much everything else is within the header of the page in the shared library. Now the only other thing we didn't touch on are the header components like the image components or whatever sort of cool thing we have going on up here. Now those are specific tutorials that we've included and you'll just want to uh, go to the tutorial page. It's really a little bit beyond the scope of what we're going to include in the prep set and go because at this point in time we just want to make sure that you have a base website, we have the components updated, and we have the uh, uh, pretty much a shell ready to go and all you need to do is add the content. Uh, of course the other thing you need to do is change the pictures and maybe any captions within the pictures or the content uh, for the header or the special headers that we've included in the package as well. But that's something you may want to take a little bit more time with uh, because it could really have a, a huge impact on what your visitors see and experience when they come to your website.